I think it was. I think it was a combination of the team and the crowd that just overwhelmed the Commodores. Hey, friends. Okay, that was a little bit too excited, but I'm allowed to be excited. It's Texas Rewind because Aggie baseball was phenomenal this weekend with the uh, Vandy sweep. Nick Savage, how you feeling? I'm feeling good. Feeling really happy. Going to soak it all in. You don't got anything to provide other than that, dude. <laughs> no, other than Billy's no. behind you. Yeah, yeah it's, I, I got caught there, to be honest with you. I didn't know what to say, so it got really <laughs> awkward really fast. Matthew Dawson, save the segment. Well, no, let's go back to Nick. Let's oh. serve back to Nick. Jim Schlossnagel, was he good on the program or he was, was he great? Good. He was really good. He provided perspective on how him and his team is looking at the, you know, the number one ranking. Look over your left shoulder how creepy Alex Fragoni looks right now. He's like overlooking like a like a bodyguard, just like yeah, he's got, locked in over there, ready I, to knock out these quarterlies. He's like, I've got to talk to Nuno. I've got a lot to talk it's about. It's a bad day to be a spreadsheet. Bad it's day. A bad day to be a spreadsheet. Dawson, what else was on the show? Well, we had Bronny on the show. Heavy He's hitters do not Schloss. want us to succeed, right, Matthew Dawson? They do not want us to succeed. But uh, I, I was certainly I was lost in the Schloss today, but I was also rattling some bog today. I was rattling some bog. Did you write that down? No, I didn't. Did, that, that just hit you right now. He's not Luke. No, no, no. He I doesn't have to write down I his jokes. I am always rattling bog. So if, I, if I told you, put your hands up in the air, and I ran to look at your computer screen, that won't be written. It won't be written. I believe you. I got the Double Dave's Pizza giveaway. It's actually on my... Screen for some reason. I don't know. Good sponsor. Oh, we also had Billy Lucci on the program. He is a headliner. With Schloss on the show, that's the headliner. Billy here. Aggie Baseball number one. That and more. It's the rewind. Aggie Baseball, officially number one. This is how we're going to start off Tex Ags Radio. Welcome into Tex Ags Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers, Rollo Insurance Studio, the Go Hour, presented by the warehouse at CC Creations. The sweep. The sweep heard around the world, Olin Buchanan. Good morning, buddy, with Good your morning. awesome hair and your awesome shirt. Guns popping. John Travolta. Button to Midway. You're looking good this morning. Well, thanks, I guess. You're looking good, bro. Well, it was time to get the old uh, summer cut, right? So, Well, how about that uh, almost summer beatdown this that weekend? That was awesome. So 36 runs over the weekend. Yeah. 36 to 6. The Aggies now have won seven out of their last nine series. And the 36 runs on the weekend against Vanderbilt, the highest all time in an SEC series. What say you, Olin Buchanan? Um, uh, Gosh, they're just, uh, it's, it's amazing uh, because, but, but here's what I want to focus on. I okay. want to focus on how well they pitched for the most part this weekend. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Olin. Because I knew they could hit, right? We knew coming into the season this team would hit. I remember being at Broniger's wedding and talking to a couple of the coaches. Yep. And they were saying, hey, I asked one of them, I said, uh, how would you think the power of this team is going to compare to that team that went to the College World Series? He said, oh, we got so much more power. I said really I said oh yeah without a doubt well you know they're they're proving it to be true sure. but if there's ever a, a question it was <clears throat> but how's the pitching going to be and yeah you know I know Vanderbilt scored some runs yesterday but to have back to back shutouts back to back shutouts back to back beatdowns <clears throat> I mean you outscore them twenty four to zero well, to start the series. It's really back to back to back beat downs, but you yeah. had to you had to work a little bit. You had to work uh, a little bit. You were down. You know, yeah, you yeah. had a nice fifth inning to then, to, to make six it great. Runs in yeah. the fifth inning. Uh, but Ryan Prager started it off, and so not only did I text you and Nick this weekend just mm-hmm. to remind yes. you guys of Nostra Nuno or what, uh, what did you call me? Nuno Stradamus. Nu- okay. So what was it? Bank on it? Is that what we did? Yeah, bank on or, it. Okay, bank on it. I said I want Ryan Prager to have a, an appearance where he sets the tone, and I think I said where we don't. No, you, you said, said you wanted Ashton back. I said I don't want to see Ashton yeah, back. Yeah, you were the one who said no Ashton, so you get back, uh, credit for that. Well, let's go over this weekend. This morning we find out uh, the number one team in the country, Texas A and M. Just the success of the weekend, the season so far. The stakes are getting harder, obviously. Just uh, your overall thoughts on things, uh, how things have played out. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously, feel good about our record. Feel good about where we are halfway through the SEC season. So you, um, you try to uh, enjoy it for a second. Um, actually, you know, what I'm trying to enjoy is just the relationships with the players and the overall experience of our games. Um, but we also respect the game itself and the league, every opponent, including Air Force, tomorrow. Um, and you know that at the end of the day, the, you know, the regular season 
we'd love to win a championship, but that at the end of the day, you're trying to keep your team moving forward, keep improving, keep them healthy, um, and try to be, if we are fortunate to be in a postseason, to, to have your team be at its best or at least healthy enough to be at its best uh, when it gets here. So, um, yeah, we can't get we can't get drunk with with uh, rankings and all that kind of stuff because it you know it literally has no value other than it that it brings deserved notoriety to the program. Coach, I think when you go back and look at the week and specifically the weekend, everybody's going to look at. Uh, they want to talk about those those blowout wins on Friday and Saturday, but I want to talk about yesterday and getting down four to nothing. Your decision to go to the pen early, even though I thought you know Lampkin had a little bit of bad luck with that, uh, the double play would have gotten him out of that inning. But uh, just Cortez and, and your continued growing confidence in him, and I like what you said after the game. You, like you feel like he's in a good space mentally, and you're going to keep him in that bullpen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Justin. Uh, let's talk about Justin first. I think he, yeah, he had some luck, but he also you know, he didn't really have uh, his changeups. Really, most days it's his best secondary pitch, and I, and I don't know that he threw one in the strike zone. Um, and then he had a couple flare hits. Uh, we threw a ball away in the center field. Um, gave up a home run to the one guy on the team. Well, not necessarily the one guy with the wind blowing out, but the one big physical player in Holcomb. Uh, and you know, sometimes, you know, you're a victim of being the guy, the third game guy. I don't remember them doing that to a top 10 team. I mean, I've seen them win top 10 series at home. Yeah. But I don't remember that them just taking apart, dismantling a, a team in a program like Vanderbilt. And there were some things that happened over the weekend where I was like, man, that's just super good from A&M. And there's also some things that happened over the weekend where I was like, Vanderbilt's quitting. They don't want to do it anymore. They don't want to compete at the high level anymore. I saw it on Saturday on a couple of occasions to the point where I was looking in the dugout to see if Tim Corbin was going to say something to, to his players. And I don't need to call those kids, kids out, but there was just some things. And if you're if you're watching with a keen baseball eye, you saw some things happen. You're like, man, that that's a good sign for A&M. Like they're making Vanderbilt quit. And it's not going to be like that in every SEC no. weekend, but it, it, I think it was. I think it was a combination of the team – and the crowd that just overwhelmed the Commodores. You know what it felt like to me, Bronny? It's like me watching them. Is this really my team? Like, you see what the Golden State Warriors did, uh, Dodgers run a few years, but whatever. All these teams, right? You watch greatness happen. And I'm watching my team do that exact thing that I crave. And it's happening in real time as I'm watching it. It's hard for me to kind of believe it. Yeah, it was kind of like, I think for A&M fans, you, you think back to... Johnny beating Oklahoma like that in the Cotton Bowl. Yeah. Like, is this... Is this real? Yeah. Like, it just... And we'd seen Johnny do it so much, much like we've seen this baseball team. Like, they continue to give us data points, man. And like I said last week, you can't ignore it at this point. Like, talent, duh. But grit, toughness, togetherness, unity, cohesion, synergy, all those words to describe the vibes of a dugout and the, just the willingness to play hard for each other... And look, on Friday night with the game well in hand, they had two hustle doubles late in that game, where I think probably the sixth inning, where Teddy Burton for sure was one of them. Like the game's in hand. They're going to run roll Vanderbilt on Friday night, and he hits a ball down the line, and he does not stop. He's running hard out of the box, and it's a hustle double. Like that is why you're successful over the long term in the game of baseball. I think he's bigger just from seeing him. Yep. But if he's that, he's, you're talking about like a Cedric he type build. But I think he's filling out to well north of 300 pounds pretty quickly. Between another year, essentially, till he's here, and then a year in Tommy Moffitt's weight room, I think this dude is, is, has a chance to be special. And then Hassan Longstreet, the quarterback. Speaking uh, of special. Super special. Well, and speaking of priority targets – this was a player that Colin Klein singled out virtually from day one and, and to the point that, like, it didn't ever feel like, David, that they were – it never felt like they were really hot and heavy after any other quarterback in this class. Right. It felt like Colin Klein 
handpicked him. He was probably well aware of him when he was at Kansas State. And they went all in to the point where you know there had to be the conversation for them to not be really in deep with any other QBs. You know there had to be the conversation between Elko and Klein of like, hey, okay, that's fine. If we do this, we've got to get him. And there had to be a lot of confidence on, on Coach Klein's part that he could make it happen. And for them to close on Longstreet this early – I think it's a big, big deal. Number one, you get your guy, and you look at him taking deep shots. You can see him as a runner. He's a, he's a leader and a winner. You talk to people um, that know him or are familiar with him down there in California that say he is a just a fun player to watch, a fun kid to be around, a really smart young football player. So, you know, ticking off all the boxes sure. there. Um, and then you just watch him on the field. He's electric. Look at the, some of the throws he makes, the accuracy, arm strength, the release. Um, yeah, he's I, – I just don't – I don't see anything he can't do on a football field. And I think right now he's borderline five-star. I think as this, as this season plays out, as this offseason plays out, these elite 11s and these things, I think you're going to see him end up being a five-star – Mr. Dawson, we had a phenomenal day on YouTube, did we not? It was a fantastic day. We had football numbers on YouTube, did we not, Nick? We did. And we got, hey, if you missed the Schloss interview, go to YouTube. Check it out. It's on there. We're going to post a lot of good stuff on there. There's a lot of good interviews on there. Keep watching, right? And remember, it's a bad day to be a spreadsheet. It's a bad day to be a spreadsheet. Lock in, David. I'm locked in. Go knock out those. Go talk to those heavy hitters upstairs. By the way, let's not forget, it was my influence on the radio waves that make good a thing for Aggie baseball. Okay, Jocko. <laughs> Thank you. We'll see you.